Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about mental health and specifically my journey with mental health. I'm pretty open about having struggled with anxiety and having that be the reason that I went to back to school for nutrition and being where I am today. So I thought I would just share my journey because sometimes just listening to other people's stories, I feel like can help someone else. And I know back in the day when I was really dealing with anxiety and panic attacks, I was just trying to get as much advice as I can, or not even advice, but just hearing other people's stories and hearing other people's opinions, because you can take like little pieces of other people's stories and try them out for yourself. It can have like this amazing effect. I am really, really proud to say that I no longer really deal with anxiety. I wouldn't identify myself as someone that deals with anxiety. Maybe once in a great while, I'll feel a little bit anxious, but at the peak of my anxiety journey, I was so anxious. I'd wake up anxious. I'd go to bed anxious. I'd have panic attacks like once a week and that is just not the case anymore, which I am so, so thankful for. And if you're someone through the screen that's dealing with anxiety or maybe depression or any other mental health issue, I know it can be like really, really hard and I know it can be confusing and you never know what to do and it just it really takes over yourself, it takes over your life. When I've been in like really bad mental health places, I don't feel like myself, like it is a very, very wild thing to know that I'm sending love to you because it's not something easy to deal with. I didn't really struggle with anxiety. I wouldn't have classified myself as really, really struggling with anxiety till probably college. But now when I look back, in middle school and high school, I did deal with deal with anxiety and even panic attacks, but at the time, that wasn't like a known phrase. Maybe it was known to people in the medical profession, but it wasn't talked about nearly as much as it's talked about today. So I never really knew that I was struggling with anxiety, even when I was. My first time that I ever had a panic attack was actually in eighth grade. Randomly, I was on a family trip with a lot of other families. Everyone was at this like restaurant and bar, and I was obviously very underage. So I had ordered a lemonade and I remember drinking this lemonade in like two seconds after I drink it, my heart like literally skipped a beat and I was like, holy crap, I think I'm gonna die. My throat literally started closing up and I was just like, what is going on with my body? So I started like hyperventilating because I was like, I think my throat's closing up and I just like went into this shock and I was like freaking out. And I like ran to my mom and she had to like calm me down. I eventually calmed down, but now that I look back at that, it was totally a panic attack, like a mini panic attack going on and I just didn't realize at the time. So then after that vacation, I would go home. And like I said, I didn't really remember struggling with like anxiety then, but anytime I had lemonade, it was like my anxiety trigger. Like I feel like there's people have certain triggers that can make them more anxious. For some reason, this freaking lemonade was my trigger. I don't know if it was like the sourness or what, but over like the next like two years, probably anytime I had lemonade, which wasn't that often, I wasn't like chugging lemonade on the daily, but anytime I had lemonade, my throat again would feel like it was closing. I'd go into full fight or flight and I literally thought that I could, couldn't breathe. So I dealt with that for a second. I fully just gave up lemonade. I was like, okay, maybe I'm allergic to lemonade. And then at that time, so this was like early high school, I really struggled with insomnia. I could not sleep at night. Like I would be up just tossing and turning in my bed. I literally remember like two o'clock in the morning or like one o'clock in the morning going down to my mom's office and she'd sometimes be down there or I'd go to her bedroom and I'd be like, I'm having trouble breathing. Like I can't sleep because I'm having trouble breathing. Again, now that I look back, it was very much, I was super anxious all night. I couldn't get my thoughts to stop. And it like triggered this mini panic attack symptoms in me. I wasn't like having full blown panic attacks, but my breathing definitely got heavy and it was just like, a nightmare, it was really hard to breathe. Again, I didn't classify this as anxiety. Junior and senior year of high school, I definitely had some mental health struggles. Like my emotions, I feel like were all over the place. I had a lot of trauma in my childhood that I repressed for a lot of years. And I think it took until my junior and senior year of high school for those to surface. So I had a lot of emotions that came out of nowhere. 
and I was anxious like a lot. Always in my head, always thinking about things, but my anxiety also was starting to be my body too. Like I could notice it in my breathing. I was like living under my parents' roof. My mom was so, so healthy at the time and I was eating well. So it wasn't like that crazy. So then I went off to college and I went to college like seven and a half, eight hours from my home. And I knew literally no one when I went. That's what I wanted at the time. I wanted to experience something new. I moved to the Midwest. I moved to Ohio, which I'm not stereotyping Ohio and I'm not stereotyping the Midwest. But I do believe that the East Coast and the West Coast just happen to be a little bit healthier and a little bit ahead. Like at, at this time, now social media has really changed the game. I went off and the Midwest was definitely a lot different of a lifestyle than I had experienced on the East Coast. There was a lot of chain restaurants. The drinking culture was really big. So going from someone that was living under my parent, my mom's roof, who had started a health and wellness company and was so, so healthy on the East Coast to going to the Midwest where I'm like meeting friends and they're like, do you want to go to McDonald's or Wendy's for dinner? And I'm like, never been allowed to do that in my life, but sure. They're drinking sodas during the days. Like again, never was allowed to drink soda at home. So I'm like, wow, I'm like off on my own for the first time. Um, experimenting with alcohol. That all was like a mix that didn't really work well with me. I don't think it works well with many people, but it really didn't work well with me. It also was like not working out. When I went to college, I don't know what happened. I think I just like kind of went for like a free for all and I stopped working out. Let's just say I really stopped taking care of myself and my anxiety really skyrocketed. Freshman year, I would say it wasn't like awful but sophomore to senior year my anxiety was so bad like my roommates at the time can attest like i was having panic attacks like once a week especially after weekends when i'd be like drinking barely eating good food i was just a mess honestly mentally a mess physically and my anxiety was just awful i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy i literally was so anxious all the time and it was like really really hard to cope so then after college i graduated and that summer i got a job in chicago so i again didn't really go home much like there was no time between uh college and my first year out that i went home so i didn't even like get a second to like get back to old habits that were instilled in my like childhood house and i went to chicago i was like a first year grad student i wasn't making good money i had a good job for being one year out of college but i wasn't making good money so I wasn't really buying like healthy food. I had a gym membership, but I wasn't really utilizing it as much as I should be. Also, I feel like just the first year out, especially in Chicago, there was so many people from my college there, so many of my other friends there, and it was like a major party scene. So I still wasn't taking care of myself. Alcohol was definitely becoming an issue in my life, and I was just anxious all the time. But the biggest difference I would say from college Maddie anxious to first year postgrad Maddie anxious is that first year out, I am in the corporate world. I am trying to make like a presence for myself in my office. I'm trying to do really, really well at my job. So that mixed with anxiety was just like not really working for me alcohol became very toxic to me in that time and i couldn't handle going out with my friends and i remember i just had like a complete breakdown and i was really really embarrassed because i've always been someone who like prides themselves on wanting to be able to handle my life and being able to figure things out on my own but i remember calling my mom and dad and i was like i don't know what to do like, I don't want to screw up my life by moving out of here and like starting all over, you know, quitting my job. I don't even know what to do, but I can't live like this anymore. Like, I literally can't keep going on like this. This lifestyle is not serving me and it's getting really, really bad. Like, I was like a mess at this time. And my parents were like, Maddie, yes, it's important to like have a job and do well for yourself, but your mental health is always the priority like you need to we need to figure this out because it's only gonna get worse it's also only been getting worse since i was in high school so like now we're wait we're years later and it's only getting worse they were like why don't you come home and you can get a part-time job you can get a another job but we'll figure this out this was a really hard decision for me and there was a lot of like shame i feel like an embarrassment that played because i just moved to chicago and i feel like on the outside outside can be so deceiving like people looking in were probably like 
wow, she's doing so well with her life. Like she moved to Chicago right after graduation. She has this amazing job. She has so many friends there. But in the inside, I was not okay. Like I was so anxious. I was, my mental self image of myself was so bad. I had zero confidence. I was just literally a mess. And the best thing that I ever did for myself was move home with my parents. I know that that's not an option for any, everyone, but I do think putting in the inner work anyone can do. And that's really what I did in this next period. My parents had moved to Boulder, Colorado in this period and I didn't know a soul there. And I honestly feel like that was a blessing for me because I moved to Boulder and I didn't know anyone, but Boulder's a very, very, very healthy community. I obviously wanted to start making some money. I was living on my parents' roof, which was a nice comfort. I was like, I'll just work at a gym and work there part time. And then on the other half, try to figure out, first of all, what I want to do with my life and like the next step of my life. But second of all, do a lot of inner soul searching and start to figure out what is going on with me and like how I can get past this because I cannot live like this anymore. That's exactly what I did. I started working at this like amazing fitness studio. The people there were so nice. The instructors were so like inspiring to me. Like these people were just so happy all the time, such good moods and they were leading these classes. And I was like, this is amazing. Like everyone is so happy how can i be like them so i started working there and i actually somehow got the 4 30 a.m shift which is kind of wild because up until this point i was never a morning person and i had to push myself to wake up every single morning at 4 30 and open up the studio and start the class and like i said that was a blessing when i'd come home from that i'd maybe take a nap or eat lunch or whatever and then i would do like so much self healing work so i literally started reading every single self-help book that you can think of i can do a whole other video on like all my favorite self-help books because i've read them all i was watching so many ted talks and oh yeah all these are definitely about mental health and mental awareness there's always an element in every single self-help book almost about the habits of your life and building healthy habits and eating well and taking care of your body and moving your body so like that started being really inspiring to me because that was like the thing that was across the board all the same in all these books my diet was a complete mess at the time and i knew that to reach where like to be where i wanted to be mentally i had to fix my diet i started working with a nutritionist i was like i was literally making like minimum wage at a part-time job but i was like i'm going to invest some of this money into buying myself a nutritionist because i'm really desperate at this point and if that has like even the smallest bit of help that'll be amazing so i started working with a nutritionist I also started working out a lot because I was working at a fitness studio. I got my own fitness membership at like a YMCA and started weightlifting during that period. I also started really getting into self-talk and focusing on how I was talking to myself, doing affirmations. I really just deep dived into like all parts of self-care. When I went to my nutritionist, I had told her that like my main focus I wanted to be was my mental health. She's like, okay, amazing. So I wrote down all the foods that I was eating. I wrote down my whole routine. And right away, she noticed two things. She's like, we need to start taking care of your gut health. And we need to start taking care of your blood sugar regulation because when your blood sugar is dysregulated, it can have really similar symptoms to um, like anxiety and like having panic attacks. Like if you're someone that deals with like the physical symptoms of anxiety and panic attacks, then if your blood sugar is dysregulated, it can feel really, really similar. And sometimes it's almost hard to tell, am I having anxiety or am I just dealing with like a blood sugar crap? Um, also my gut health, my gut health was like so bad at that time. So as I always talk about your gut health, I have a whole video on gut health. Your gut really is your third brain and if your gut's not thriving, your mental health's not thriving. So for the first time, I was focusing on my diet, looking at it from two different lenses. I was looking at it as I want to make a lot of my meals really fiber rich, add in a lot of gut healthy foods, um, and cut out some foods that I'm sensitive to, like dairy and gluten. And then I also was looking at it from another lens of blood sugar regulation for the first time. So I need to start eating all three macros at every single meal until then even if i was eating healthy like i could have like maybe like a salad which is a very very healthy food 
but I wasn't having protein in it and I wasn't having healthy fats in it. So really at the end of the day, those are like healthy carbs. You're just eating a meal full of carbs, even though it's healthy. So I was really, really focusing on having a healthy carb, a healthy fat, and a healthy protein at every single meal. I also majorly cut back on three things. So I majorly cut back on alcohol. We all knew from that time period I was not having a good relationship with alcohol. And that's when my panic attacks would happen after a weekend of drinking. So I was like, that needs to freaking go. Also, I have majorly, majorly, majorly cut back on coffee because that's another time that after I was drinking coffee, I totally noticed like either panic symptoms or just either having like a really weird crash with my body, like weird energy fluctuations. So I cut back on coffee. And then the third one is I really, really, really cut back on sugar because it's just a fake dopamine source. And I was like, I need to figure out how to fuel my body with real dopamine. So I cut out those three things, which honestly, if you're someone that deals with mental health, anxiety, depression, so on, I would try cutting out those three things out of your life because that was a game changer for me. After I got that all in check, I stopped having panic attacks, like completely. Still was dealing with a little bit of anxiety, but my panic attacks were literally gone. And that's what like really inspired me to go back to school for nutrition. Cause I was like, this is insane. I need to help people do this to, for themselves too, because if I can do this for myself, anyone can do this for themselves. That's how low I was at that point. I ended up going back to school for nutrition. My diet, my routine, everything was like super, super put together. I was paying so much attention to my habits. But as I mentioned, my panic attacks were gone, but my anxiety still was like a little bit there. I, I wasn't happy with it. It definitely was so, so much better, but I wasn't like 100% happy with it. Get to the next point. I had to do some more work, but it wasn't super nutrition, diet, movement based. And my functional doctor was like, I think you should talk to a therapist. At the time I was open to talking to a therapist, but I also was reading the book, Only Love is Real by um, Brian Weiss. I became obsessed with this book during the time I was like literally handing it out to all my family, all my friends and telling them to read this. The whole book, um, is about hypnotherapy and it follows Brian Weiss who works with clients and he has his own center in Miami and they do past life regressions and they get down to helping people with anxiety, trauma, depression, and it like really goes down to the deep rooted issues by doing hypnotherapy with them and these patients, these clients were seeing insane results. And I be just be, was really, really fascinated with hypnotherapy at the time. I was like, yes, I could do traditional therapy, which there's obviously nothing wrong with that at all. But I just know myself and I do take a while to open up a lot. So I was like, you know what? I might as well try something new and try hypnotherapy and see if it works. So I tried to get in with Brian Weiss himself, but he like books out like two years in advance. So I was like, I'm not waiting. I found a hypnotherapist that actually lives in New York. So this was all during the pandemic. I did like 10 sessions, maybe 12 sessions that summer. It was insane. At that time, I even had this like tick going on. Like I was like constantly clearing my throat. I was like <clears throat> <clears throat> all the time. And like gastro doctors, uh, ears, nose, and throat doctors. No one could figure out what it was. It happened to literally just be a nervous, anxious tick that was just like in my throat and constantly I was clearing it. And that like even completely went away with hypnotherapy. I very, very, very rarely deal with anxiety now. And I think the biggest things were, for me were my nutrition journey because that made the first catalyst move that really really got me to a very secure point and also just like my mindfulness and self-talk journey and just starting to love myself that got me to another point and then the last little area was asking for help and getting help through someone else and for me that happened to be hypnotherapy and that got me down to like a flat line that's my anxiety journey like i mentioned i really don't deal with anxiety anymore at all which is something that i'm really proud of because Maddie five years ago was an anxious mess and the fact that I'm sitting here now I'm like I don't know the last time I had a panic attack and yes obviously sometimes I have like overthinking and I get in my own head but I wouldn't really call that anxiety that's more just like getting in your head and overthinking but I don't deal with any physical anxiousness symptoms. I still don't really drink much coffee at all. I think that's really really helped me and I'm also really 
I drink alcohol, but I'm really conscious of the types of alcohol I'm drinking. Like I try to limit how many like sugary cocktail -y drinks I'm drinking. Wine doesn't do super well. I try to limit the wine that I'm drinking. And vodka, weirdly, does not well at all. So I don't really drink vodka at all. I actually haven't drank vodka in like three years. But just being like cognizant of my body and how I'm feeling and checking in with myself on my caffeine intake, my alcohol intake, my food intake, like periodically, I think has like really helped me. And I've just become so much more in tune with my body through this whole journey. So I wouldn't wish it away. But like I said, I'm no longer anxious, no longer an anxious girl. Yeah, that was, that's my anxiety story. I love you guys and we'll chat soon. Let me know in the comments also what types of videos you guys want to see. If you like more of the sit down talking type of videos or more like days in my life. But yes, I'll be here on YouTube. I'll be here on Instagram, TikTok, all the things. So check me out, subscribe to my channel and we'll chat soon.